Cracker, we got a great show today. Cool, let's go. Are you ready? Oh man, I'm pumped. All right, well today we have somebody who is the epitome of the epitome of the epitome. Talk about the... me. No, somebody else. Who, her? Yes, we have Miss Chiropractor who's a player on the DC Cyclones and along with her we have the owner of the DC Cyclones, Mr. William Flowers and they're gonna talk about the, their team, the DC Cyclones, the WABA, the league, training, all the type of stuff that we like to discuss anyway. Yeah, all that stuff's in my wellhouse. So Your wellhouse? Wheelhouse, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like I said, I think she right here. Mm, let me let me take a look. I got it. Oh, yeah. she said she got it. She got okay. it. <laughs> all right, well, shoot, set it up. <laughs> all right, we're about to be on in here. We about to rumble right here on the Veronica Harris Show. Y'all stay tuned for this. Today's guest, I'm looking at my past and my future. Yeah, well, it, past it? What do you Let mean, me past it? Let me tell you what I mean. Are so, we going all the way back to we kindergarten? Got this, no, 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 not that far back. <laughs> we got this dynamic guard just recently out of school, getting ready to go on her journey into playing professionally. Uh, she's playing locally right now. We're going to find out about that team. And we have the team owner. I want to. I would like to be an owner one day. You know I had an entrepreneur as spirit. <laughs> but he's not only an entrepreneur, but he's a performance enhancement specialist. He's an educator, I would say. Like me. Like no, 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 wait, wait, no. Like you, you mean like me. Well, listen, forget about us. Let's meet them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We have Kyle Proctor and Will Flowers. Thank you for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, thank thank you, thank you for thank being you. here. So, um, start with you, Kyle. Um, I already know you're a dynamic combo guard. You had a great career. Uh, at Bowie State. At Bowie State. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about yourself. Introduce you to you. Introduce yourself to our fans. What um, fans? <laughs> My name is Kaya Proctor again, and basketball is pretty much all I know. I've been playing since I was in eighth grade. That's when I kind of took it serious and was a gym rat in the gym every day and just trying to get better. So I noticed the harder you work, the, the faster you move up. I started from sitting on a bench, watching all my, my friends play, to starting over my friends just by working hard throughout the summers and AAU seasons. Okay, okay. And Mr. Flowers, you are the owner of the DC Cyclones. Yes. And you're going to tell us a little bit more about the DC Cyclones because I know I haven't heard of them before. Had you heard of the DC no. Cyclones? Okay. Ooh, and we got to change that right away. Yes, right away. And you are also the owner of WAF um, Consultants. Yes. And you specialize with that with leadership consulting. Leadership training. Yes. Leadership training, performance enhancement mm -hmm. training. And then you are Can also. You let him tell us. Well, I, yeah, well, well, she was segueing me yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, she, you know, she, I, I, I thought she was doing a good she job. Go too far. <laughs> okay. So, um, again, owner of DC Cyclones. Um, this is our, we just finished our second year. Mm -hmm. um, also, the owner of WAF Consulting. I do leadership uh, consultation. Uh, in addition of the Coach Wheel Training Academy, where I'm an athletic trainer, performance enhancement specialist uh, from everything from basketball to tennis to um, volleyball. So, um, I definitely, definitely have my hands in, in, in the process of developing people and players. And what is your background in that as far as, um, cause because you sound like you're an educator much like us, but what is your educational background as well? Um, well I went to Morgan State University. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I also went to the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. So mm -hmm. my background is in um, industrial organizational psychology, uh, which I focus on leadership. Mm. So. That's my whole thing with professional development, focus on leadership. You know that's my thing. Mm -hmm. So you want to start there or we're going to start about the leadership, the ownership, or the basketball? Well, you know, you pick it out. You, you, you running things today. You go ahead. All right. Well, let's start with you, Kai. Start at eighth grade, combo guard. Um, so how did you, how'd you come across the cyclone? Um, well, actually, was my <laughs> trainer in high school. <laughs> so... Um, we met, my coach, my high school coach told me, you know, I have a trainer I want you to meet, work out with, happen to be Will. So from then, what was that, my sophomore year? Sophomore year. We kept in touch. So I would bump into him in the gym, or he'll call me, text me, just to see how I was doing, just to stay connected. Okay. So with the Cyclones, you said it's your second year. Mm -hmm. So what league are you affiliated with? Like, how did, how did this come to be? So do you remember the old ABA? Yes. 
So the WABA started uh, about two years ago. And so it's a sister to, to the ABA. And um, you know, I was introduced to it uh, just randomly. Um, a young lady was, was asking me, you know, do you think you could train, go to New Jersey and train? Um, they're starting a league. And I was thinking, hmm, is there a team in DC? Because um, there were teams in Jersey, New York. Mm -hmm. And so from that, um, I talked to the commissioner of the league and um, decided to uh, put, my, put my name in the hat and become owner. Mm -hmm. And it really happened very organically. So. Really? I, you know, I'm, I live in New Jersey, and I've never heard of Really? Yeah. So, like, how many teams are in the WABA? So our first year, I believe it was 10. Mm -hmm. um, this year, uh, I think, I believe it was 14. That's so good. it's definitely growing. So now we're, we have uh, some teams in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, we have some teams that are in the South. We have a, a, like a plethora of teams in the South. And um, this year, it was kind of like the South versus the North mm -hmm. in the um, WABA championship. It was Atlanta and New Jersey. Really? Yeah. So, so how long is the WABA season? Um, it's, we play about eight games mm -hmm. and uh, we travel. Um, so this year we were seven and one. Um, the year before we were two and six, so mm -hmm. we made a oh, great turnaround. we made a big turnaround, um, and I'm excited because this platform um, gives women who didn't go to UConn, um, <laughs> okay. didn't go to Notre Dame, didn't go okay. to Maryland, didn't go to these bigger schools. Right. It gives them the platform to um, get some stats uh -huh. um, to pursue overseas dreams, and so oh. that's that's what's really special about this. Because if you went to Bowie, I know you can hoop. If you went to Morgan State, I know mm. you can hoop. But what do you do after that? Good and so. And so that's what this, this league is for, is for those individuals who didn't have that big ESPN mm -hmm. uh, viewership. Because, every, you know, the WNBA is just pretty much a couple of schools. And so, yeah, you're um, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, young ladies from Howard can definitely, definitely play. And so I really wanted to be a part of developing and continuing the legacy of women's basketball. Now, it's f funny you bring that up because I've read, or I'm pretty sure you've seen in the, the news, where they talk about with the WNBA disparity in pay between mm -hmm. the WNBA and NBA. And that's a whole different discussion as far as economics is concerned. But um, let me ask you, do the women in the WNBA, do they get paid or is it like a stipend or something? Well, uh, you know, the, in our first season, it's going to be a, a struggle to pay the young ladies. So mm -hmm. um, this is really a platform to get exposure. Okay. And so that that's why. Um, so it's, it's not really seen as something that's like, you know, professional like the WNBA. Oh not no, saying, I'm gonna stop you right there. I was it's gonna professional. Say, not that, no, okay, because I was gonna even stop myself. Not that it's not professional, mm -hmm. but in terms of, well, usually when we talk about professional, we mean like get paid to do it. So in other words, when I'm talking about this, you would see it as semi-pro. Semi-pro, or maybe I don't even say like an unpaid internship because you're getting that experience, those stats, that exposure, mm -hmm. and you're going to want to translate that into like maybe going to Europe or something like that. Well, uh, you know, growing the sport mm -hmm. in your first couple of seasons, you're you're not going to have as a business um, money to uh, pay. So mm -hmm. this is literally for people who are really wanting to play overseas and are hungry. To play and it's really about a commitment to me a commitment to you to give, mm -hmm. give you that platform so what it is is just that your pay is the platform your the pay is exposure because we have professional referees um, that um, uh, that are in the uh, nc2a um, and they play in the uh, referee the wnba um, so you know what that sounds like to me the ncaa your pay is you get your education your pay is we give you that exposure <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but I wouldn't say you're, you're, um, because some people have the NCAA, oh, they're evil, they're exploiting. exploiting I, yeah, I don't yeah. see you, I don't see the exploited if, because you're definitely saying we are giving you this platform mm -hmm. so that you can go make money elsewhere. But I looked at Greg because I was like, hmm, that sounds like some of them things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they be saying at the NCAA. Well, th well, the big difference is, um, you know, there is, um, an opportunity for later to get paid because you know it's a very early, early, early embryo state for for our league. Mm -hmm. So, but I think that's what is important. Like, you know, 
like you said, the WNBA is really if, like those few teams. It's like it's the Yukons, the Stanfords, the Marylands, the Notre Dames, and you know, depending on the year of the cycle, maybe a South Carolina and so forth and so on, or Mississippi yeah. State can get in there. But you're right, there are like over 300 Division One schools. That's Division One. Forget about Division Two, Division Three. Right, right, right. So where do those ladies play? Because they're just as competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just as um, you know, committed to the game, so they don't all of a sudden want to be like, oh, I can't play it anymore. Right. So, but maybe they don't have all the stats or the exposure to get overseas. Right. So you're providing that opportunity for yes. them. Yes. And that's great. That's awesome. Because it's nothing worse than being an athlete and feeling like, this, is this all? Is this what my now? time? Like, what now? Yeah, what now? So that's what, that's what we're all about. Mm -hmm. That's what the league is all about. That's what the DC Cyclones is all about. And um, helping you to get to that next level. So when... You, when you have you have home games, where do you play in D.C.? Uh, this year we played at the Arc, so the Boys and Girls Club off of uh, Mississippi Avenue. Okay. All right. Do you know what that is, Gregory? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I haven't played there yet, but you know I don't yeah, know too much know. about. So this is a kind of short season. So when you're not playing and uh, training, what what are you doing, Kai? Um, I am assistant coach at Bowie High School, so okay. I'm coaching the game. Nice. So I, I like that. She. I'm a coach. Yeah. Well, yeah. so are you. I'm a coach. We all talk about. <laughs> kind of coming up on the break. Okay. So we should say that for after the break. Mm -hmm. Uh, DC Cyclones. I, I'm gonna catch a game. How about you? I don't want to catch a game too. Now, do y'all do any little uh, outreach? Do y'all kept grassroots and develop some of the programs, the young girl programs, do anything work like that? Well, so actually, wait. Hold on. We up against the break, so we're gonna have to wait for that. Take us out. Uh, be right back after the break. I am Dominic. with our lovely guests. We have Kaya Proctor and Mr. William Flowers. And Gregory, you said there was something you had to get to. Yeah, I want to get to the combo guard, all right? Um, exactly. They got scoring guards. Mm -hmm. Now, we're in an age of positionless basketball. Yes. And now, you know, they say a guard, it was guards and forwards. They didn't name shooting guards, point guards. They didn't have those labels. Guards were guards. Yeah. And then it was something called a combo guard. Mm -hmm. And I know how I matriculated to being labeled a combo guard. Matriculated. I think oh, I am pity. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Say it for me. The epitome? I was the epitome of a combo guard. Okay. All right. Now I want to hear about Kaya's uh, journey as a combo guard. Uh, how did it come about? How do you like it? How do you like the, do you like the label? Talk, talk to us about it. Um, I've grown into the label. At first, I was kind of comfortable in the shooting guard position, okay. but I felt like to branch out my game and do more, I should be able to play both positions. So um, I was kind of like forced in the position because we didn't have too many other guards on the team that I was playing with. So I had to get comfortable in bringing the ball up and also scoring the ball when I felt, you know, it was needed. So. Working hard, you know, summertime, AU, trainings, just to be more comfortable with handling the ball, not just going to score the ball. Now, you prefer to score the ball, though. Yes. If you had your pick, you would score the ball. Absolutely. Instead <laughs> of other people. I mean, I, I would say I do a lot of everything, but from the two positions. Okay. So if I don't have it, I will create something for someone else. Okay. All right. Um, I, I would say she's a playmaker. 
you know. Mm -hmm. um, she can shoot from the outside, but, you know, she definitely is a great passer. Mm -hmm. So. Do a little everything. Great decision maker, great vision. Yeah, talking, okay. everything. All right, pretty good with the handles. Yeah, I just look at it as someone has to control the floor. So I'm like the coach on the floor. Oh, I'm telling you. everybody yes. where to go and where they should be and know you in the wrong spot. Just controlling the floor. A lot of responsibility. Yeah. That is so good. I think it's always, when I was coaching, and I would have to call a timeout, I was like, what are we doing out there? I said, somebody has to be in control. Somebody has to drive the car, we all going to die. Because somebody <laughs> has to direct it. And that was what I would tell, supposedly, my guards. Like, look, you got to be in control. You have to direct. If you don't, <laughs> crash, crash. And doing that, that kind of separated me from other guards. Like, coming mm -hmm. into college, um, I red shirt of the year. So once I got on the court, I, I seen everything from watching my red shirt year. So mm -hmm. it was just like I was directing. And they would listen to me, although I was, you know, a sophomore coming. Cool. They're just like, okay, she knows what she's talking about. Like, well, that speaks so, to your leadership yeah. skills. Definitely. And that's what you're talking about. And that's yeah. what you're into, leadership. Yeah. But as an owner, and, well, no, I'm sorry. You had two things. What's your second thing? second thing I want to get to the training aspect. So as a performance enhancement specialist, do you uh, enhance what they have, or do you have to mold or create the player that these people want to be? Uh, it's a combination of both. You know, you... you, you you know, everybody has um, signature skills and abilities, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I, you're not going to make a big all of a sudden put the ball on the floor, right? So you're just going to make them operate with their talent. Mm -hmm. And so how can I best use that canvas and, and, and um, put, it in the best, put that person in the best situation? And so what it is is that I can't ask you to do something that you aren't able to do. Mm -hmm. So what I do is kind of meet you where you where I see you're going with what you have and so from there we build build um, start building the, the house from the floor up okay. so what was it like training Kaya actually it was pretty easy uh, she is probably one of my favorites I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna lie um, you know when I met her she reminded me of my first kid and I was like wow I called my first kid um, Khadija I said yo there is another you out there her mentality is something I've never seen before. Not even in, in, you know, when you compare the sexes, it's like some women just have this locked in thing that guys get later. And so, um, and so, you know, from the standpoint of push me, push me, push me, that's who she was. And so I was like, man, so when I would go see her high school games and then when I would go to go to, um, Bowie State to watch her games, I'm like, dude, same person, exact same person. So when she was a combo guard, without the ball, she, direct mm -hmm. you know, I was I was it's it's when you're a basketball you know guru you love to see the play before the play and that's what she saw and I was like man I've got to get her to play on my team so okay oh, okay so is this your first year with the Cyclones yes, or is this okay first it's your year. first year okay and this the year y'all went seven and one okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> so can, we equate, <laughs> can we equate that so how would you uh, rate um, uh, Mr. Flowers as an owner like, how do you feel like? I would say 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, he's really everything you can ask for. <laughs> um, just, just understanding, very involved. So most of the time you see an owner, they Not just do. Not meddling, like a no. Jerry Jones type no. of a. <laughs> just like a good involvement, like at the games, on the bench with us, anything we need, like you're okay, you need anything, just mm -hmm. around and actually there. When you see, when you think about owner, they do all the behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. He's actually there seeing, being involved, traveling with us, mm -hmm. on the buses with us, everything. So he's pretty much like going through what you're going yes. through. So he's not asking you to do anything that, you know, he's not he doing himself. So as a leader, you know, that's that's what you want your troops to see or that's what you want your people to see that, hey, I'm in here with you together. Mm -hmm. We're doing this together. Um, so we had said before in the other segment that, you know, with the WABA, you, um, at least you ladies are not paid at this time, yeah. but from my understanding, he pays for everything. He makes, you don't have to come out of pocket for anything. No, nope. just bring your shoes and anything else you need to play on the ball. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> now, um, is there for the WABA, is there a, 
one and done rule? Can they come right out of high school? Because I got some prospects. <laughs> I prospects. And I tell you, she's pretty good. Um, you know her. Uh, your niece. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, right. yeah. Look, she's going straight from high school to the league. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we'll put her on the side. But seriously, uh, what's the rules? Um, you have to play college ball. You have to play, okay. Because I, it, this is the plat. Well, I don't want to say have to, but the platform is for you to continue your college career. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to be able to um, have stats in college, ideally have stats in college, have stats with my team so you can move forward. Like I really want to be a springboard for your professional um, endeavors. That's mm -hmm. really what I want to do. I just want to be a part of the journey. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would prefer you go to college, but you know, I know things happen in life. Yeah, but. so, yeah. Hey, I thought. thought well, so really, I mean, they, I mean, well, they can because until they until the business model expands to where they can really, that's the only reason why people would probably leave early is because of the money, yeah. right? Well, no, nah, I mean, she just want to showcase those skills, and then we gone. <laughs> 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 Jumping right over overseas or to the pro league. Like, I mean... Well, overseas is not for everybody. You've been there. Overseas is not easy. Yeah, and I mean, let's see, the pros, you... What they come in eight? They come in at eighteen, nineteen now. Yeah. You know they come mm. in at eighteen and nineteen now, mm. getting drafted, number one picks. Like they won't, they won't put too many miles on your car. I'd rather just go straight to playing with the women. <laughs> no, but the miles come. Huh? No, Gregory, the miles come before you get to college. Before you get to college, because you're playing AAU, yeah. you, you're travel team, you're on more day. than two yeah. teams, you're playing like three games in one day. That's where the mile, that's the thing about it. That's where the mileage comes from. The mileage is cumulative and it starts from that first day you get on that rec team or that AAU team. That's right. And that's all those miles. Because you figure in college, you only have 30, you only play 30, 35 games, depending on how far you go in the tournament. And then they have a restriction on your practice time. The NCAA, right. you only allow like 20 hours. Da, da, da. And then, so again, you, it's kind of structured. So all that mileage that you get, Guess it's before you get there. That's true. Yeah. Okay. See? All right. <laughs> Told you. I don't agree, but I'll concede. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you need to offer? Because we're about to come up against the break again. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I want to see some receipts. All right, combo guard. <laughs> now, I know I'm a combo guard because any guard you see in the top 10 in scoring isn't in the top 10 assists. Any guard you see in the top 10 assists Ain't in the top ten in scoring. You were guess both. who's in both lists? You are. <laughs> that makes me the combo. This guy. <laughs> All right. That makes me the combo. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, how are you? How are you the combo? Let me see the receipts. Um, I would say scoring. It wasn't so much assists because they was passing me the ball, although I got, gave it to them. Okay. But it was more so like rebounds, other places, defensive stops, things like that. Okay. All right. Play on both ends of the court. Nah, I got news for you. You're not a combo. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a great guard. You're a great guard. Not, you rebound. No, she's a combo. <laughs> she's a combo. She's a combo. <laughs> she's a combo. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. All right. Um, we have to do another break, Ron. We got to take another break. <laughs> okay. When well, we going to <laughs> take us out. Uh, uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> Dear me, you're older and wiser, but I want to remind you that I'm making smart choices right now. With the help of caring people who intervened early on, I'm avoiding some really dangerous pitfalls. So, I'm able to make healthy decisions when I'm offered pot and pills. The support I'm getting now is the big reason you're living a long and healthy life. So thank you to all the people who are there when I need it the most. Sign, your younger self. Get involved in National Prevention Week by sharing your own letter to your future self and inspire others to take action today for a healthier tomorrow. So now is the time for what is Veronica thinking? And are you wondering what I'm thinking? I am. You really? I can't wait to hear Because mostly you don't care. Uh, yeah, I want to hear this one now. <laughs> <laughs> well, today what I'm thinking about is again, and it's something we've talked about before, um, but especially with our guest today, the importance of the mental. 
when it comes to sports and just not sports, just life because as we know, sports is I'll a microcosm. Elaborate. Is it, make it good too. <laughs> Come on, the mental. Let's the go. No, well, I've learned today from speaking with I guess the importance of the eighty twenty rule. That you know how they say like twenty percent of the people will do eighty percent of the work. Right. So instead of you know it being ninety percent mental, ten percent physical, I'm going to go with the eighty twenty rule because, like you tried to say or you did say that there has to be more of the physical involved. I think it does. So I would say that, but definitely that 80% of that mind, but it's so, so, so important. And even though we may attribute it to um, a bigger number, a bigger number to it, I think we still overlook the importance of, you know, developing our mental, asking questions, especially why, like why are you doing something? And then being able to explain it, articulate it, all right, so it, and that really comes from that mental development, that that mental intelligence, or you can say emotional intelligence, intellectual, you know, things like that. It really has to be developed because if not, you know, you're just out there lost. You know, nobody's driving the car, and the body shall crash. Mm. What do you think? I want to hear from the guests. How did that move you? <laughs> 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 Veronica's thinking that. <laughs> Were you moved? <laughs> I agree. But and she then, wasn't moved. <laughs> <laughs> um, being in both situations, like as a coach, seeing it, and as a player playing it, mental plays a big role. You got to stay controlled, composed, and, you know, think about everything. You have to be quick on your feet because mm -hmm. someone's in front of you, but you still have to know, like, okay, if I attack, this person's going to help, so I know I have this person open. It's just seeing it before it happens, kind of. Yeah, I, I, I hate when I'm playing the game and I hear I'm coaching, right? And I hear somebody from the stands, slow down, slow down. No, they need to think faster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and, and they're going at appropriate speed, but yeah, they're mentally yeah, 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 think thinking faster. What, yeah. Yeah. That's what, a good point. What did 50 Cent say? You See know. how I moved them? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta move them. Yeah. <laughs> I was moved. You had to move them. But yeah, you made a good point. They need to think faster. And again, that's training <laughs> for the mind because the mind is like a muscle. And I guess if you think fast, you got to get them fast twitch. You got to get them neurons firing. That's but true. like that's you true. said, or you mentioned to me off camera, you have to put them in situations right. where they can do that's it. Big. And so now, big. so now it's a reflex versus mm -hmm. a processing Mm -hmm. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And so now we put them in a situation during practice, during training. Mm -hmm. So when they see it, they know what their options are, mm -hmm. A, B, C. And then we, 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 you are now thinking a lot more quicker mm -hmm. versus slow down, slow down like that parent. <laughs> yeah, I do hate that too. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just you have to develop. Uh, we have to teach and develop differently than, than mm -hmm. just reading and like the black and white, we have to like expose and illustrate wh what concepts that we're trying to get across to players and students. Mm. Well, I moved. <laughs> hey, <good. laughs> hey, my guests have moved me, and I, you did too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is now time to go. I, yeah, right. I've enjoyed it. Oh, I've enjoyed it. Did you it. enjoy it? I, it was great. Were I you moved? It was great. I was. I was moved. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be our thing, though. We moved. <laughs> but we are going to make sure we are moved to come see a game. Yes, definitely Please come see a game. Please keep us informed. Real quickly, where can people find you? Do you have, you have social media? Tickets? So, for <laughs> you for you guys, oh, okay. it's so me. Oh. Oh, oh, but uh, please check us um, check us out on our website, mm -hmm. um, dccyclones.com. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram, uh, dc underscore cyclones. Okay. And... Um, you get to see everything that's going on with our team. Um, you'll know uh, when tryouts are. You'll know um, workouts, everything. Well, all eyes gonna be on you, Kai. <laughs> for that that's fine. Game. Well, we are gonna, we're definitely gonna keep our eyes on you, and you know, feel free to come back to the to the show anytime. Oh, I would love to. We enjoyed you, and that's it, right, Gregory? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. We done. Thank you for having me. Unfortunately. See? Until next time. Yeah. Oh. Right back. Yeah, we're gonna check y'all out. <laughs> yeah, please too.